Let's talk about Prince Harry's new documentary series called Heart of Invictus. It's just launched on Netflix this morning. It's a five-part series giving a behind-the-scenes look at the individuals taking part in what is, what is actually a very uplifting event. It's the Invictus Games. We know all about it, but we also see Harry himself opening up about um, how the death of his mother has affected him. Let's take a look. Well, well editor Russell Myers has been watching it this morning. Um, what did you make of it? Well, you look at that clip there and it's pretty hard-hitting, isn't it, whenever Harry opens his heart, speaking about his mother. I mean, it's the anniversary of 26 years has gone by since Princess Diana died in 1997. The anniversary tomorrow. And uh, you can't help but be moved. And I think that is part of this documentary. It's beautifully shot, the score is beautiful. And it's something that I just can't stop thinking that this is where Harry should be. This is his natural home, helping others, talking about his trauma and helping others with that. But with Invictus, the incredible sporting uh, event that he set, has set up and has had years of success now, we're just weeks away from uh, the latest instalment in, uh, in Dusseldorf. In, uh, in the first week of September. And, uh, and that is, that is what, what we expect of him. It's not like doing um, Oprah Winfrey uh, interviews. It's not trashing his family. I think we've all had enough of that. Mm -hmm. And I think when you look at the individual stories in this documentary, it's five-part limited series out today. I've pretty much watched most of it. I mean, I've rushed through it. But uh, some of the stories are fantastic and it really gives you an, uh, an indication of what was the catalyst for, uh, for him setting up this incredible programme. And it's interesting because those who might say, oh, we've heard him talk about, you know, his, him grieving for his mum and all that. But actually, there he just, just at the beginning of that clip mentioned something about Afghanistan. So I'm wondering whether he talks about it in context of when he went to serve. Yes. That maybe that in itself was also part of his process of... He does. ..coming to terms with himself. Exactly, and totally right. So it's he, not gratuitous, is what it, I'm saying. It's part of the Invictus Games. No. His grieving is part of the story. Totally that. I mean, yeah. he talks about, listen, these, these servicemen and women who have lost limbs, suffered mental health, Right. traumas. You he know, felt at home with He did, people, and he says actually. that this, this was, you know, the only trauma that I can kind of be on a par with them is losing my mother. And as you say, it isn't gratuitous. It is trying to give you a, a flavour of what the story means to these people. And so, as you say, you think this is the right place for Harry and it's where we've always perhaps wanted to mm. see him. Um, is this actually um, a, quite a watershed moment for both Harry and Meghan, then, uh, in their sort of, you know, yeah. life as celebrities rather than royals, let's I mean, say. I tell you, you only see Meghan once or twice in it, and it is at uh, a, new, a gala in New York for wounded veterans last year. I uh, possibly remember it. She had a beautiful red dress mm. on, and um, they're talking to the wives and partners of injured servicemen and women, some who committed suicide, and it's pretty heavy. And I think that when you look at them and the way that they deal with it, with the compassion that they deal with it, it's, it's really a sight to behold. And I think that, you know, people, a lot of people have fallen out of love with Harry and Meghan mm. in this country. And America, it's been well documented. But this is a, a safe space, if you will. It's something that they, they talk about how service is universal. This is the kind of service I believe that they should be uh, concentrating on. And um, what does it mean for their future in the sense that... So, we know they had a big deal with Netflix. There was some sort of controversy with Spotify. Just bring us up to date yeah, on let me, I'll give you a quick, where this a quick lies round up. in well, their sort of future. Megan had a, you know, the Archetypes podcast. Didn't really work out. You know, it wasn't... It, Number one in certain countries, but it was not uh, commissioned for a second series. The Netflix um, deal, a big, a big money deal, £100 million pounds for that. How this much? £100 million, £30 pounds, million. 30 million for Spotify. Now, listen, these figures are being banded around, but what is next in sort of their content creation journey, if you will? And I think this Heart and Invictus shows you exactly where they should be. We might see a lifestyle series. We might see something what Harry and Meghan did next. And I think when you take the vitriol and the sort of trauma out of it, it uh, it's something that we might see them move into this sort of lifestyle sphere. Yes. Well, it might be exactly, as you say, a relief for them as it is for everybody I think else. So. You know what? That Harry, Harry speaks about sort of the, the trauma of dealing with a family who couldn't deal with mental health issues. And I think that that will obviously grab the headlines tomorrow. But it brings you back to the individual stories and that's what it should be about. Well, uh, moving on to other royal stories, you've got an exclusive in the mirror this morning about why it is that Prince Andrew ended up being photographed next to Prince William at Balmoral, with Kate resigned to the back seat. Yes. I mean, this is an extraordinary development you've brought us. Well, there were pretty shocking images, I think, for both people opening their Sunday newspapers yes. and seeing these photographs of Andrew sitting in the front seat, being driven to church, 
on Sunday. Now, the Royals are all at Balmoral. Uh, the King is hosting them for the first time since the Queen's passing last year. You know, there's a lot of firsts going on here. And if this is the sort of start of the rehabilitation of Prince Andrew, then I think that a lot of people will find that unpalatable. Who wants the rehabilitation? Well, I'll say who does want it. It is the, the king. He is bringing him back into the fold. That is part of this, uh, this instance that Are you William saying that the king wanted Prince William to well, drive I'm you, Andrew? What I'm told is that he overruled Prince William oh. in this instance. Because if you heart your mind back to the fact when uh, uh, Prince Andrew had made this £12 million settlement out of court to Virginia Giuffray, you know, the tensions were running high publicly and we didn't really want to see him in a, in a public role. And, uh, and this is what the royal family is having to contend with. But, you know, people I was speaking to yesterday, people from the, you know, uh, abuse charities, the Women's Equality Party, they say that this is unpalatable if he was to come back into a central front role. And I, I, I think the royal Look, family Prince needs William's to... William's taken the flag for the last 24 hours, hasn't he? And it turns out, actually, the king... Wants his brother front and centre. I think what he wants, he, you know, people on his part will say he's got an awful lot in his in trade. This mm. is something that he wants to draw a line under. However, you know, this is a problem that isn't going to go away. Mm. Just recently, uh, Prince Andrew was mentioned in new court documents to, to do with Jeffrey Epstein. This is a big, big problem for the royal family. It's something that it won't go away. And I think that Harry has taken a lot of flack over the last few, uh, uh, few months and a couple of years, perhaps. This is something that uh, the royals should possibly be concentrating on. Um, and it's interesting because uh, we mentioned Sarah Ferguson yesterday in relation yeah. to her being at Balmoral. You've got a bit more on that, haven't you, about how well, it, she is sort of geeing everyone along? The, the broker, I would, uh, I would say, is how she's been put, put about. And, uh, yeah, listen, Fergie is the life and soul of any party, is how it was described to me yesterday. And you can well imagine her at Balmoral sort of hobnobbing mm. with the King or Prince William mm. or whoever it is that would listen. Now, uh, I think that, that is a, the marriage is still strong, even though they're not married, wow. put it that way. Well, we've been running a poll. Uh, should Prince Andrew uh, return to royal duties? Only 8% say yes. There is no suggestion that he's going to return to royal duties, but I suppose being in the royal family, front and centre, and being photographed is in itself well, we didn't see, quite we, a tricky We didn't thing. think we'd see him in the front of the car with Prince William, no, did we? we did so not. you never know what's going to happen. No, we did not. Right, OK. Thank you so much. Thank I always you. call you Royal Russell. I always forget <laughs> that, what your actual name is. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> Thank you so Stay much. Right